Two years have passed since Hillary Clinton campaigned for the Democratic presidential nomination, and of course Sarah Palin campaigned for vice president as the Republican nominee. Rebecca Traister covered both candidates for Salon.com and is out with a new book about their campaigns and the media coverage called Big Girls Don't Cry, published by Simon & Schuster, which is a division of CBS. Rebecca, thanks for coming. We thanks appreciate for it. having me. Let's begin with Hillary Clinton. When it comes to her campaign, just how much sexism was going on, not only in the campaign, but in the overall tone of the nation at that time? Well, there was an enormous amount of sexism, some of it very overt, the Hillary nutcrackers, the iron my shirt, you know, bumper stickers that used the B word and worse about her. That stuff was very overt. And then there was the more subtle stuff, the obsession with her voice and her tone and her laugh and what she was wearing that was all really tied to the fact that she was a woman. And that was the stuff that we need to talk about a little bit more in order to recognize it. As, as sexism. I see. Did Sarah Palin go through the same thing in many ways? Yes, although it came from different angles, obviously. Uh -huh. um, but sure, as far as the obsession over, for example, her large clothing budget, you know, without much thought uh, about the fact that if you're a woman on the campaign trail, you require a different kind of aesthetic ma maintenance, you know, that we have different expectations for how women look in clothes and in makeup than we do for, for men. Now they say the difference between a hockey mom and a pit bull? Lipstick. There were all kinds of ways in which the fact that these, these were women, who we've really almost never had on a presidential stage before, was going to impact the way we think about them, the way we talk about them, the way we criticize them, in all kinds of ways. Of course, an African-American man was running for president at the same time. Yes. And we have many discussions going on around this country. What's worse, racism or sexism? Because he was dealing with some things, obviously, as well. Yes. Any conclusions? Come well, I don't think there's, I don't think that the comparison and the sort of, you know, contest of oppressions was a particularly useful road to take, though it was one that many of us couldn't help but take. One of the things that became apparent through, through what was sexism and racism that we heard throughout the campaign was that these things are really connected and that when you talk about people who've been shut out of power, people who have never had access to presidential power or re really even to serious presidential campaigns before, you're talking about different kinds of oppressions that have been connected and, and in fact we saw them during 2008 being uprooted together a little bit. Could a woman really serve as commander-in-chief? Well, I think we answered that one. Do you think America learned something from the 2008 campaign? And are women better off today? Are they doing better today because of what Hillary Clinton and Sarah Palin went through in 2008? I would not suggest that things are fixed and that, you know, the misogyny and sexism is gone any more than the racism is gone when we talk about Obama sometimes. Uh, but what I would suggest is that the fact that we're having these conversations and that we have vocabulary and more of a heightened awareness about the sexism, uh, about the prejudices that, that we're talking about with these candidates, uh, means that we are moving toward a better place where we can talk openly about some of the unfairness that, that candidates face. It's a fascinating book. It's called Big Girls Don't Cry by Rebecca Traister. Rebecca, thank you so much for coming in. Really do appreciate it. Thank you for having Good me. Good stuff.